If the 2020 NCAA Wrestling Championships actually happened, would heavyweight have been Gable Stevenson's to lose, or would somebody else have slid in and took that title from him? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you what could have happened by going through the full bracket. So let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. <laughs> What's going on wrestling fans? My name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling. I want to invite you if you're not already and you are interested in more wrestling related content that you hit that subscribe button. And in this series we're going through weight by weight looking at who could have won an NCAA title if the coronavirus had not canceled the entire tournament this year. It was an unfortunate circumstance, but we we're making the best of it and looking at the full brackets. Now, if you haven't already, you can check out these other weights, whether you want to start at 125, 133, or anywhere else. And we finally made it to heavyweight, the last weight to discuss. And interestingly, right, up, right off the bat, uh, looking at the quarterfinals and the blood round, that's where we're starting. That's the best place to start. From the quarterfinals, we have number one through eight all in the quarterfinals. The first time that has happened in this series. So, what would happen in the quarterfinals? Looking at number one, Gable Stevenson, the undefeated wrestler coming in at 15 and 0 to this tournament, going up against Tate Orndorff of Utah Valley. Orndorff is has an 18 and 4 record, a solid a solid season so far. But uh, Gable Stevenson. In, this, in the past, in 2018, has actually wrestled Orndorff, beat him by a major decision, and I think a similar thing can happen here. Gilbert Stevenson, you know, he's an aggressive wrestler. He is the most aggressive heavyweight wrestler I have seen uh, in many, many years, and that's why I think Stevenson moves on to the next round, and Orndorff moves down to face off against Gary Traub, and... Looking at the next matchup, Matt Stencil of Central Michigan, the number five seed, going up against Tanner Hall, the number four seed from Arizona State. Now, Stencil has been a bit more of the aggressor in a lot of his matches, a bit more aggressive, uh, and a bit more better at scoring bonus points. He has more fall, he has a lot more falls um, over his opponents than. Tanner Hall, Tanner Hall, looking at their common opponents. Hall may have won a lot of the matches, but you see Matt Stencil just pinning guys. And I think because of that, uh, Stencil is going to move on to the next round. And Hall is going to move down here now to face off against Harvard wrestler. And the third matchup in the quarterfinals, Anthony Cassiope going up against Trent Helger of Wisconsin. Wisconsin, uh, and Helger of Wisconsin, the number six seed. Cassiope, the number three seed. Cassiope, so far this season, uh, has defeated Helger two times. He beat him at the Big Ten Championships four to three, and he beat him three to two in the duel. So I, although I don't think this is going to be a massive win, he's not going to pin him or anything, although Cassiope is good for a nice pin every now and then, I think at the 285-pound weight class, uh, Cassiope is the solid wrestler, and he's going to move on to the semifinals. A solid, a solid win for the Iowa wrestler. And Hilger is going to move down here now to face off against Jordan Wood of Lehigh. In the final quarterfinal matchup, before we get down to the blood round, is Mason Paris of Michigan going up against Demetrius Thomas of Pitt. Paris has been just absolutely on a rampage this year and he, he has been an impressive guy to watch and he's been the other a very aggressive heavyweight similar to Gable Stevenson. Now this season he has wrestled Demetrius Thomas early on in the season. I believe it was the first tournament of the season. He beat him at the Michigan State Open by major decision. I think Paris defeats him again, moves on into the semifinals going up against Cassiope. Now as far as <coughs> what else is going to happen here in the blood round, whoever wins this Moves on to become an All-American. You lose, you go home. Slavikowski of Harvard going up against Tanner Hall. Uh, Slavikowski, solid wrestler, popped onto the scene, young wrestler. Tanner Hall, on the other hand, has beat him already this season. This season, he beat him 2-1. to one. Uh, I believe that was at the Duels on the Diamond, and he where he beat him back in January. I think Hall beats him again, moves on into the next round. But Slavikowski will have his chance to All-American again in the, in the next few years. Going Gary Traub versus Tate Orndorff. Now, 
Orn or Traub at this point has you may be wondering how number nineteen seed got in here, and that's because I had Traub actually defeating Gannon and Gremel. Uh, neither of those guys are massive aggressors. I think you know Gary Traub has been an exciting guy to cheer on this year. He's been a fan favorite for a lot of uh, Ohio State fans as well as other just general wrestling fans. And I think that Traub going up against Orndorff would be a solid a solid match. But ultimately, I think Orndorff would get the better of him. And, um, you know, he's, he's had a solid job moving on to the season, but Orndorff's going to get the win there. Going Josh Hokett versus Demetrius Thomas. Now, Hokett has been an All-American in the past. Hokett of Fresno State, the number 12 seed. Demetrius Thomas, uh, on the other hand, has not been an All-American. It's coming into his senior year. And I should say he's not been an All-American in D1 because he's an NAIA national champion. Now, what, what would happen here? Um, Hokett, although he had his last loss at the Southern Scuffle, and he's been a solid wrestler, I just don't think it's been his best year. And because of that, and because Demetrius Thomas has been coming on this year, he's been ha having a solid year, uh, I think Demetrius Thomas would be able to get the better of Hokett and move on now to the next round. Jordan Wood versus Trent Hilger. Wood of Lehigh, the number nine seed going up against Trent Hilger. Wood, the EIWA champ. Hilger, now, listen, he has losses to Cassio B. He has losses to uh, Mason Paris. But other than that, he's had just solid wins. He has, I believe it's a better record than Jordan Wood. And although I really wanted to push Jordan Wood onto the next round, I think that Hilger would get the better of him. And that's why Hilger is moving on to the next round. Now, as far as Helger versus Thomas, we'll get to these matches quick and then move on to the semifinals, which I know that you're waiting for. Uh, Demetrius Thomas, in the past, has won 7-3 against Hilger. That was in 2017. And uh, actually, whenever Demetrius Thomas wasn't even in D1 yet, these two wrestled, and Demetrius Thomas beat him. Now, that was back a while ago, so you know maybe you forget about that, but it's, it's still some, some relevant information there. Um, back when he was in NAI. And I, I do think, though, that Demetrius Thomas still is able to get the better of Hilger, and I think he can do it this season. Whether it's by a 2-1 to one decision, a 3-2 to two decision, uh, it will it will be close. Uh, I can promise you that. But I think Demetrius Thomas ultimately gets the victory and moves on there. And Hilger now going down here for 7th and 8th. As far as Tate Orndorff going up against Tanner Hall, what would happen here? Uh, now, Hall, his last loss was at the Cliff Keen Las Vegas when he lost to Paris. He lost to, uh, and, and he also lost to Anthony Kassar before that. But he did put up a solid fight against Anthony Kassar in the dual meet there. I, I do remember that in the dual meet uh, at the beginning of the season. Now, he beat Orndorff 3-1 to one at the Cliff Keen Las Vegas tournament, and I think that he beats him uh, here, although Orndorff does have a victory over him 3-1 to one at the Journeyman Classic. Um, I think that Hall gets the better of him here this time at Nationals, and Orndorff now going down here. And let's move on to the semifinals. Gilbert Stevenson going up against Matt Stencil. What would happen if these two squared off? These two surprisingly have not wrestled uh, in this season or their careers, which I, I don't know why I'm surprised by that, but but they haven't. They just have not wrestled. Um, now, Stevenson has two wins over Cassiope and as well as a win over Paris, where Stencil, on the other hand, has a losses to both of those guys. And because of that, and because Stevenson is, although Stencil is an aggressive heavyweight, he, he can score points, Stevenson's just, dominant and just able to control guys and I think Stevenson does the same thing here and moves on to the finals as far as and Stencil's going to move down here to face off against Demetrius Thomas Cassiope going up against Mason Paris uh you want to talk about dominant heavyweights you're going to be talking about Mason Paris he beat him by by a pin in the dual meet. If you remember, these two wrestled Michigan versus Iowa. Uh, although Iowa won the dual meet, Mason Paris ended up winning by fall over Cassiope in the second period, I believe it was. Just took him over, and he was beating him before that too. 
Because of that, I just don't think Cassiopeia is has made that leap yet to Paris and Stevenson level. Um, he's he's right there, he's close, but just not on that level. And I think Paris makes it to the finals. So you have the number one versus number two seed in the finals, and down here you just have a couple of other matches that we have to get to first. Cassiopeia going up against Tanner Hall. Um, they have similar wins, similar bonus, similar you know wins and losses. But I think Hall, because he's coming off of a solid uh, kind of winning streak, I think Hall ends up getting the victory over Cassiopeia. Unless Cassiopeia is able to kind of get on Hall, get his weight on him like he does to so many other guys. He's just a big heavyweight. I mean, he's a big guy, scary guy, mean guy. But I think that Hall would be able to get the better of Cassiope um, if it came down to it. And Cassiope now going to move down here uh, for 5th and 6th. A solid first finish for the young gun. Now, looking at uh, Demetrius Thomas going up against Matt Stencil. They are 1-1 one one against each other in, in previous competition. Stencil, uh, in the past, has beat Thomas at the at an NCAA tournament. Beat him at, like by a score of... It was a pretty solid score. It may have been a major decision, I believe, he beat him by. And because of that, because Stencil has that win over Thomas in the past, I think he beats him again, and Stencil goes for 3rd and 4th. But Demetrius Thomas still an All-American. For 7th and 8th place, before we get to the final, 7th and 8th place, let's talk about Hilger versus Orndorf. Hilger beat, uh, he actually beat Orndorf in the past, beat him by fall uh, in November, and I believe he's 2-0 against him overall, and I think that Hilger just gets that victory again here for 7th and 8th, um, and finishes off the year strong. Cassiope versus Thomas. I don't think that I, I I do think that Cassiope is just a bigger guy than Thomas and just has a bit more uh, to his wrestling than Thomas and because of that Cassiope is going to finish out the season with a fifth place finish for going for third and fourth Tanner Hall versus Matt Stencil. Hall has close losses. He's very defensive. But like I said, uh, Sten Stencil is just a little bit more aggressive of a wrestler. I think he gets the better of him. I think he takes down uh, Hall a couple times, and I think he ends up beating him for third and fourth. Now, the finals match. This is the match that, of course, you're looking forward to. Of course, you're looking to forward to the discussion on this. Who would win between Gilbert Stevenson and Mason Paris? Now, these two have wrestled uh, this season at the Big Ten Championships, if you aren't aware. Stevenson won eight to six at Big Ten, so maybe that was a close score. What what exactly happened to that? The thing was, uh, there were a couple things to note here. Just to, to before we get to the champion, there were a couple things on both sides. One, Mason Paris almost pinned Gable Stevenson. Towards the end of, I believe it was the second period, he was taking Stevenson over to his back, had him on his back. Time expired. I don't know if Stevenson just kind of rolled over and let him get that or what. But I will say this, that although Paris was able to get those takedowns on Gable Stevenson, Stevenson seemed in control the entire match. He seemed like he was controlling Mason Paris, unlike, you know, just similar to how he's controlling his other opponents. And unlike where, you know, you saw Kassar and Stevenson wrestle the last year at Nationals and at Big Tens, when, uh, when Stevenson didn't necessarily have full control over Kassar, I felt like he was the dominant wrestler in this match. And that's why Stevenson is your champion, your final, your final champion at 285 pounds, Gabe with Stevenson of Minnesota. Now, if you're interested in hearing what happened during the team race, which team would have won looking at all these results, Iowa, Penn State, Nebraska, Minnesota, which team ended up on top, you're going to want to check out this video right here.